Now let us move to the very important part of the learning school. That is that how learning school has evolved over the years. Before we move on to the evolution of the learning school, I would like you to spend few minutes on the title diagram of this particular slide. You can see that on the slide there is an arrow which is not smooth, which is with one and two curves. And also there are four things written. Experiment, fail, learn, repeat. Actually this title diagram represents the learning process we have in our life. And believe you me that the learning process in the organizations is not different in any way. The organizations also move under the hit and trial method. They experiment something, they fail or succeed, they learn, they repeat or they correct themselves. And this is what the essence of life. And this is something which is evidence-based. Now, let us understand that how the learning school of strategy has actually evolved over the years and who are the contributors to this particular school. Emergence of a learning model. How did it emerge actually? You see that it is written here from disjointed incrementalism to logical incrementalism to strategic venturing. There are the three phases. The first is disjointed incrementalism. The second is logical incrementalism. And the third is strategic venturing. These are actually the three different efforts which contributed to the evolution of the learning school of strategy. And you see that in the first two, incrementalism is common. That strategy is actually incremental. In bits and pieces, through the piecemeal approach, actually the human beings and organizations move. And when they collect those pieces, there emerges a strategy or there forms a strategy. Now let us see them one by one. First is disjointed incrementalism. There is incrementalism but this is disjointed. Men without any definite connections between different decisions and small actions. This was actually contributed by Charles Lindblom in 1960s. He was a gentleman who observed that in organizations or the pattern of organizational behavior is incremental but disjointed. According to him, disjointed incrementalism is a pattern of decision making in organizations in which the scenes are taken step by step as a problem unfolds. You need to focus on a very, very important thing. In his opinion that organizations take decisions in steps and those decisions are taken not primarily to grab some opportunity but to deal with a problem. So actually, Human beings and organizations are problem-centered as they, and you know that before starting a journey, you cannot forecast, you cannot predict the problems. The problems only come before you when you actually travel on a path. Same is the case with the organizations. When organizations start working, as they work, they face problems and to solve those problems, they take decisions. And those decisions actually may be, in his opinion, disjointed, but actually they result into the emergence of a pattern, which ultimately becomes the organization's strategy. He described policy making as Actually, he has used the word policy making 
Remember in 1950s and 60s, the word strategy was not in use. Actually, the word policy was in use because the certain forms of the organizations were large and predominantly held or owned by the public sector or the governments. So he has used the word policy making as a serial, remedial and fragmented process in which decisions are made at the margin more to solve problems than to exploit opportunities. Just focus on this, what he has described. In his opinion, the strategy making or a policy making is a serial process. The process which is in episodes, the process which is in phases, remedial. And these episodes or these phases are actually to provide remedy of a problem. And these are fragmented, mean these are broken into parts. These are not well connected. And remember that these are made at the margin. These are not pre-planned. These are made at the margin and more to solve the problems rather to exploit the opportunities. So this particular description in the disjointed incrementalism actually catches our attention towards a very important point that strategy making in organizations is always a learning oriented process. This was the first main contribution. Now we move on to the next. Before that, Lindblom argued that many actors get involved in the process, but they are hardly coordinated by any central authority. This is a very, very important point here by the Charles that in his opinion, in the process of disjointed incrementalism, which is serial, remedial and fragmented, which is problem centered rather than opportunity, many people involve in it, but they are not coordinated by a central authority. Lindbergh summarized his theory with the statement that policy making is typically a never ending process of successive steps in which continual nibbling is a substitute for a good bite. The point to be understood here is nibbling and a good bite. So that nibbling means that if, for, for example, you have got something to eat in your hands. The one way is that you get a good bite of that and you get satisfaction. Another way that you don't get a good bite, but you get the micro bites. This is known as nibbling. In his opinion, the policy making or strategy making is a process like taking the micro bites, which resultantly contribute to a good bite. After that, there is the second contribution, which is the logical incrementalism. That was disjointed and this is logical. Disjointed means that the decisions were there in parts and pieces, but there was no central authority to coordinate them. But now there is the second Building on the disjointed incrementalism, the James Bryan Quinn in 1980s, he theorized that no doubt the strategy making process in the organizations is incremental, but this is not disjointed, rather it is logical. He believed that constantly integrating the simultaneous incremental process of strategy formulation and implementation is the central art of effective strategic management. In his opinion, that the strategic management, formulation and implementation is an incremental process, but it is well coordinated. And this is what the diagram which shows that the, these are the different steps of a ladder. And you see that these are logically connected, which ultimately guides an organization to a door, which opens up certain opportunities for it. Quinn agreed with Lindblom on the incremental nature of the process but not on its disjointedness. Instead, he felt that in the business corporation at least, central actors pulled it together and directed it toward a final strategy. In his opinion that no doubt the decisions are taken in, in pieces and bits. Decisions are taken step in steps in serial but there is always one central authority in the organization which creates a coordination between all these fragmented decisions, all these serial decisions, all these remedial decisions. So he believed, he put forward 
logical incrementalism instead of disjointed incrementalism. According to Quinn, the real strategy tends to evolve as internal decisions, and this is very, very important. Pay attention to it. According to Quinn, the real strategy tends to evolve as internal decisions and external events flow together to create a new, widely shared consensus for action among key members of the top management team. In well-run organizations, managers proactively guide these streams of actions and events incrementally toward conscious strategies. Remember that he has emphasized on two things, internal decisions and external events. Two external events happen, internal decisions are taken. And these are taken step by step under the coordinated approach. And resultantly, there emerges a strategy based on the learning of the organization. Quinn actually argued that that strategic management is done on the run. He believed that it is not that that you have a strategy in the mind before you start working. Rather, as you run on the path, you develop the strategies and you achieve something in the organizations. Third thing is strategic venturing. There are players in the organizations who take initiative and set direction for the strategy. Always remember that, that this is not something that in the organizations only there are designated players who can take actions. Rather, intrapreneurship is the essential part of the organizations. And in organizations, there could be anyone at any level of the organization who could have a good idea and he could get some resources for the idea and he can take the venture. These can be the strategic ventures in the organization and these strategic ventures can direct the organization strategy into a new direction. So strategic ventures are also important as the learning process. So conclusively here we say that there are three main or basic contributors to learning school of thought, disjointed incrementalism, logical incrementalism, and the strategic ventures. And they all actually reinforce the presence of learning in the strategy formation of the organizations. Thank you very much.